15 most beautiful parures. The Malachite parure of Queen Desideri of Sweden, created by Simon Petito in the 1820s and 1830s, is a prime example of underrated jewellery. The parure consists of a tiara, a necklace, a brooch, two bracelets, and a pair of earrings decorated with malachite stones with scenes from the Greek epic. The parure has never been worn, but it deserves attention and admiration for its subtlety and beauty. After the death of Desideria, the parure passed to her daughter-in-law Josephine of Lichtenberg and then to Sophia of Nassau. Josephine, the wife of Napoleon I, had a similar parure, but after her death it was not handed over to the heirs, but transferred to the museum. In 1913, Sophia Nassau's miniature was also transferred to the Northern Museum. Now the miniature is on display in the museum, providing a unique opportunity to touch history and art. The Sapphire Parure of Empress Maria Feodorovna is one of the most impressive treasures of the Romanov royal family. The parure includes a tiara, necklace, brooches and corsage jewellery made in the style of the Napoleonic era. It was a wedding gift from Maria of Hesse, wife of Alexander II. The tiara consists of a large central and eight small sapphires in a gold setting with diamonds. And the upper part is removable and turns into a riviera. The necklace is decorated with a scattering of sapphires and diamonds. The central sapphire weighs 159.25 carats and the remaining 15, 150 carats. The brooches consist of large oval and round sapphires in a diamond setting. The peculiarity of the parure is its collapsibility, which made it easy to transform jewellery. However, this also led to the fact that many elements were used for other decorations and lost. The tiara, for example, was divided back under Maria Feodorovna, and sapphires and diamonds were used in other products. The royal jewellery presented at Christie's auction is a striking example of the jewellery art of the 19th century. This miniature, created in 1850, consists of exquisite elements, each of which is a work of jewellery craftsmanship. The central element of the parure is a tiara made of gold and silver inlaid with sapphires and diamonds. The tiara is decorated with delicate patterns and details that give it a special elegance and grandeur. This headdress was probably used on special occasions, emphasizing the status and wealth of its owner. In addition to the tiara, the parure includes a necklace, earrings, pendant and brooch made in the same style and technique. The necklace consists of several rows of sapphires and diamonds that hang on a thin silver chain. The earrings are elegant pendants with large stones that perfectly complement the tiara. The pendant and brooch are made in the same style as the rest of the elements and serve as the completion of this magnificent ensemble. The parure, which belonged to Olga Valerianovna Paley, Countess von Hohenfelsen is an outstanding piece of jewellery art of the early 20th century. Created in 1912, it reflects the elegance and sophistication of the Art Nouveau era. Olga Valerianovna Paley, née Kulikovskaya, was one of the most famous and influential women of her time. Her marriage to Grand Duke Pavel Alexandrovich, the younger brother of Emperor Nicholas II, attracted the attention of society and the press. After the murder of her husband in 1918, Olga Valerianovna emigrated to Europe, where she kept her parure. The parure consists of several key elements, each of which is executed with exceptional skill and attention to detail. The central place in it is occupied by a tiara decorated with many diamonds and sapphires. The diamonds are artfully cut 
and arranged in such a way as to maximize their brilliance and radiance. Sapphires, in turn, give the composition depth and color saturation. Royal jewelry, kufa earrings with a bow behind the ear have been popular in royal houses for a long time as they allowed crowned heads to wear heavy earrings with precious stones without pulling the earlobe. A Danish ruby set with cuffs from the royal treasury of Denmark. The headset was first worn by Desiree Clary at the coronation of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1804. Her husband, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, was then a marshal of the empire. Spouses Jean-Baptiste and Desiree Bernadotte became monarchs of Sweden. The set then consisted of necklaces, earrings and hair ornaments. Further, the headset was inherited, and in Denmark there was a peculiar tradition of wearing it by crown princesses. Queen Ingrid added a tiara, as well as a brooch and bracelet, in the shape of currant leaves. After the queen became a widow, she distributed most of her jewellery to her daughters. Crown Princess Mary is wearing it now. Traditionally, in this perua, Crown Princess Mary appears at a reception in honour of the new year on January 1st. The tiara with peridos is an exquisite piece of jewellery made in the 1820s by the imperial jeweller Kohut. For Duchess Henrietta, wife of Archduke Charles of Tuscany, a tiara decorated with several large peridots surrounded by diamonds can be worn as a necklace. It is part of a pair of earrings, a large corsage brooch, and a necklace with seven drops that can be mounted vertically on the tiara. The perure was inherited by Archduke Frederick, the husband of Archduchess Isabella, who wore it to the coronation of her nephew, King Charles III, the last King of Hungary in 1916. After the death of the Archduchess, her jewels were auctioned off and purchased by Count Johann Kudenhof Kalergi, a Hungarian aristocrat. After the Count's death, his daughter, Countess Marina, Elekta von Kudenhof Kalergi, put these jewels up for auction in 2001, after they had lain in a California bank vault for 50 years. The jewellery was purchased by Fred Layton Jewellery House. After the auction, they were seen on Joan Rivers in 2004 at the Golden Globe ceremony. Subsequently, the earrings and brooch were bought by Lily Sufra and exhibited at a Christie's charity auction in May 2012. The further fate of these jewels is unknown. The decorations of the powerful have always attracted attention and aroused admiration. One of such outstanding collections is the Devonshire Miniature, created for the coronation of the Russian Emperor Alexander II. This exquisite jewellery set was commissioned by the 6th Duke of Devonshire from the famous British jeweller Hancock. The paru consists of seven pieces of jewellery, including four head ornaments, a bando, a comb, a crown and a tiara. The other three pieces of jewellery a large corsage ornament, a necklace and a bracelet, complement this magnificent ensemble. In total, there are 88 cameos in the Peru, 48 of which were bought by the second Duke of Devonshire in the 18th century. Some of these precious cameos date back to the period of ancient Rome and Egyptian Alexandria, but most were created during the Renaissance 320 diamonds used in the creation of jewellery attract special attention. These precious stones, belonging to the Duke of Devonshire's collection, are artfully embedded in gold and enamel, giving the perure shine and luxury. Today, the set is kept in the family estate of the Cavendishes, Dukes of Devonshire, Chatsworth House. This is a place where you can see and appreciate all the beauty and splendor of the Devonshire Perure, which continues to impress with its elegance and sophistication.
Royal jewellery has always attracted attention with its luxury and history. One of these unique pieces of jewellery is a brooch made of a parure garland, feuille de grosseillet, which belonged to the wife of Napoleon III, Empress Eugenie. This brooch, made by the Bapst brothers in 1855 by order of the Empress, was part of one of the most luxurious jewellery sets of the 19th century. In 1887, after the death of the Empress, her jewellery was put up for public auction. Among them, beautiful brooches in the form of a bow and bouquet were sold, as well as a luxurious necklace. A garland set of corsage brooches, of which the Feuille de Grosselier brooch was also a part, was divided among several buyers. The Feuille de Grosselier brooch, along with several other jewellery, was bought by the owners of Tiffany & Co. And half a century later, it was purchased by the managers of the Metropolitan Opera to be presented as a farewell gift to Lucrezia Bori, the diva leaving the stage. The brooch, accompanied by the singer's extensive personal jewellery collection, returned to the donors 25 years after the announcement of the will. Now, for the first time in 125 years, the jewel has been put up for auction again and sold for 2,377,716 dollars. This case highlights how historical jewellery can change hands preserving its value and significance over the centuries. The Norwegian emerald Peru is one of the most significant and impressive jewellery in the world. It consists of several elements, including a tiara, a necklace, earrings and two brooches made in the same style and colour scheme. The history of this Peru goes back to the beginning of the 19th century when Napoleon presented it to his first wife, Josephine. The tiara, made by the Barbst Jewelry House by order of Napoleon, was named the Emerald Tiara of Empress Josephine. It was made of white gold and decorated with a large square emerald in the centre, surrounded by smaller emeralds and diamonds. The tiara was part of a larger ensemble that included a necklace earrings and two brooches, which together created an image of perfect emerald splendour. After Josephine's death, Tiara began her long journey across Europe, passing from one heir to another. Eventually, she ended up in Sweden, where she was acquired by the Swedish royal family. During its existence, the parure has undergone some changes but its main elements have remained unchanged. Due to the complex family ties between the royal houses of Sweden and Norway, the tiara has been the property of the Norwegian rulers since 1937. Since then, it has been a favourite decoration of Queen Sonja, who is happy to wear it to many official receptions and events. The emerald tiara has become a symbol of royalty and elegance in Norway. It recalls the rich history and cultural traditions of this country, as well as the connection between different royal families over the centuries. The Danish Emerald Peru, a collection of royal jewels belonging to the Danish crown, is a stunning set of ornaments that includes a tiara, necklace, earrings and brooch. The brooch can be disassembled into three smaller brooches and can also serve as a pendant for the necklace. Queen Caroline Amelie imposed strict regulations on the Paru, prohibiting its export from Denmark and its wear by anyone other than the Queen. Therefore, it is simply not feasible to wear these exquisite pieces at international royal events. Until 1914, the reigning queen owned sets of royal jewels. Queen Alexandrine sent them to Rosenborg Castle for safekeeping, and they eventually became part of the museum's exhibition. The jewels remain there today, though they are naturally made available upon request by any reigning queen.
The parure was crafted by the renowned jeweler C.M. Weisschaupt in 1840 for Queen Caroline Amelie to commemorate her silver wedding anniversary with King Christian VIII. The parure features 26 emeralds that King Christian VI presented to Queen Sophie Magdalene in 1723 in honour of the birth of the future Frederick V. 41. Emeralds belong to Princess Charlotte of Denmark, and the diamonds used in the tiara also previously belonged to the royal family. In total, the para comprises 67 large emeralds and 2,650 diamonds, making it a truly opulent and historically significant piece of jewellery. One of the most famous and beloved stones of Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain is aquamarine. This stone not only symbolises purity and transparency, but also has a special magnetism that won the Queen's heart. In 1953, Brazilian President Getulio Vargas presented Elizabeth II with a necklace with a removable pendant and earrings decorated with aquamarines and diamonds in platinum. The South American stones immediately captivated the Queen with their beauty and grandeur. In 1957, she ordered a tiara from the jewellery company Garrard, which became a real work of art. The selection of stones for the tiara took about a year, and the result was a unique piece of jewellery that perfectly suited Elizabeth II. Satisfied with the Queen's assessment, the Brazilians did not stint and in 1958 presented her with a bracelet of seven equivalent aquamarines in addition to the tiara, as well as a brooch made of large aquamarine in a frame. This gesture has become a symbol of the strong friendship between Great Britain and Brazil. 14 years later, five more rare aquamarines were added to the tiara. The four stones were donated by the governor of Sao Paulo during the Queen's state visit in 1968. The fifth aquamarine, weighing 920 carats, became the largest ever owned by the royal family. This stone was so impressive that it was not even used in jewellery, but was left as part of the royal collection. Royal aquamarine jewellery has become a symbol of friendship and respect between Great Britain and Brazil. They remind of the importance of cultural and diplomatic ties between countries and how precious stones can become not only an ornament, but also a symbol of friendship and mutual understanding. The Victorian era, which lasted from 1837 to 1901, left an indelible mark on the history of jewellery art. One of the most striking and memorable elements of the Victorian style are coral prints. These jewellery pieces combine elegant simplicity and unique sophistication, making them an ideal choice for those who appreciate sophistication and style. Victorian-era coral prints are real works of art. They are made of high-quality materials such as gold and silver, and decorated with natural corals, which give them a unique shine and charm. These ornaments are often decorated with precious stones, such as diamonds, sapphires and emeralds, which adds to their luxury and brilliance. One of the main features of coral prints is their versatility. They are suitable for everyday wear, as well as for special occasions, be it a wedding, a ball, or a gala reception. Due to their elegance and sophistication, they are able to emphasize the beauty of any woman and make her image unforgettable. Coral prints also have a deep symbolic meaning. In the Victorian era, corals were considered a symbol of love, passion, and loyalty. They were given as a sign of devotion and deep feelings which made them especially valuable and significant. Georgian-era decorations are exquisite works of art created during the reign of King George III, 1760 to 
to 1820. These ornaments are distinguished by sophistication, elegance and high craftsmanship, which makes them desirable objects of collectibles and admiration. One of the most striking examples of such jewellery is a gold parure with pink topaz, created in Great Britain around 1800. The Georgian era was a time of significant changes in fashion and art, which was reflected in jewellery. During this period, craftsmen created jewellery that not only emphasised the status and wealth of their owners, but also reflected their taste and preferences. Gold jewellery, consisting of several items such as earrings, a ring, a bracelet and a brooch, were especially popular. They were often decorated with precious stones such as emeralds, rubies and sapphires, as well as more rare and exotic stones such as topazes and amethysts. The gold peru with pink topaz, created around 1800, is an excellent example of Georgian jewellery art. It consists of several items, including earrings, a ring and a brooch, made of high-quality gold. The central element of the paru is a pink topaz, which at that time was considered a symbol of love and fidelity. This stone, thanks to its delicate pink hue, gives the decoration a special sophistication and sophistication. The brooch, which is part of the paru, is decorated with filigree work and small diamonds, which gives it additional elegance. The ring, made in the same style, is decorated with a large pink topaz surrounded by small diamonds, which makes it an ideal addition to any outfit. The earrings, consisting of several tiers, are decorated with large and small pink topazes, which gives them volume and depth. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks!